All right, so this is working really good. The Retroflag GPI case. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, check out an image on the Raspberry Pi Zero, play some games. I am super impressed by this product. It is freaking amazing. I really, really dig it a lot. So let's start out with unboxing, build it, and then gameplay. All right, so here it is. This is made in China, and it looks kind of like a Christmas box. I thought that was kind of funny. Now, uh, Retro Flag has given me free products in the past. I have checked out a lot of the Raspberry Pi cases, but I did pay full retail price for this. I want to say right around $70 with the case. And uh, I have to say, I'm actually pretty happy with my purchase. Like, I really think it's worth the money. All you need is you need this, and you need a Raspberry Pi W, and you need three AA batteries. So let's just go ahead and check out the box here. Really beautiful box. And I have to say, once the batteries are in this thing, it's quite hefty. Um, I want to say it's like a pound or two. Um, now, the thing I really like about this is that it's four buttons. And it's not just a B and A, it's a um, X and Y as well. Um, there's no speaker, but there does it does have headphones. It does allow you to run this on a power cord or off of batteries. And you can put rechargeable batteries in, in there if you want. So it's got a 2.8 inch screen. It's 32, 320 by 240 pixels. And um, you could, like I said, batteries or DC out. Other couple things on here you might be seeing is that it does have a contrast button that works live and it has a volume button that works live or on the fly. And so that's really cool. Also, um, power button, we can turn it safe off and safe on. When you open it up, you have plastic over the buttons. This cartridge right here is what actually holds the Raspberry Pi in it. Um, you have the battery pack on the back. You have the micro SD slot dust cover there. And then that's the contrast that I was just moving and then the on and off switch there. Now, um, when you want to start assembly, you basically just want to pull this apart. Try not to be as violent as I was <laughs> with it, but um, there's no screws to start. And uh, that's the main board that talks with everything else. As you see there, it looks like a Raspberry Pi W fits right on it. Right here, I'm showing you the safe off and shut down script. There's a little button there behind the batteries. Make sure you turn that on if you're going to be running a, um, a script to turn on and off your Pi. Um, otherwise, if you just want a hard on, hard off, leave it off. So right now I'm aligning the Raspberry Pi Zero. There really is only one way that it fits onto the thing. I was just looking at it like, is there any way somebody can mess this up? And unfortunately, if you get the pin in the right, you know, HDMI, or I'm sorry, it's a micro USB port, um, then you know, there really is only one way to do it there. So there you go, I got it there. Next, you want these little risers and you wanna take the half of the cartridge with the game on it. And that's what you're gonna screw the risers into is that piece right there. And that's gonna be the riser between the Pi and the encoder board here that connects to the, the GPIO case. So I'm just screwing in these risers. This one's really difficult. I found that the screwdriver did not magnetically attached to those risers so that was way harder than if you when you flip it the screwdriver that comes along with the kit around it, it does have a magnetic tip so i got those risers screwed in and now my pie is mounted and uh this light bulb kept going out but uh you can see i have it properly mounted now the next step is the heat sink this is not in the instruction manual but mine came with a because because mine came with a heat sink and if you have a heat sink you can absolutely do it. you want a flat one though like this is a very flat heat sink. The next thing is you could flip that encoder board over and uh, just make sure you don't screw in the encoder board. You want to put the other half of this case on and now the screw. Some people screw in the board without screwing in the whole cartridge here. So I flip the board over. I put the other half of the plastic cartridge on there and now I'm screwing in these screws. These screws are way easier to, easier to do because like I said that the screwdriver included is magnetic. And so I'm just closing that all up. Now I have my Raspberry Pi Zero properly seated in the cartridge, and we can put the cartridge back into the Game Boy. You also need to put those batteries in. If you skip the step before, there's a little button behind these batteries for the safe shutdown script. Make sure you have that on or off, depending on how you're gonna be setting up your um, GPI case. I'm gonna be turning on the safe script on because the image I have has the script installed on it already. If, you, if you're starting from custom, you can install the script yourself. Okay, so now I'm just putting everything back together, covers on and ooh, taking off that. Um. 
In order to get your controls to be working in the menu system, go ahead and hold left D-pad and select for five seconds till that upper left-hand corner light blinks. All right, so we have our controls working. We've disabled the background music. You can mess with the contrast on the left side of the screen, pretty cool. Let's do a lot of brightness for the video. You can um, change the volume over here on the left. And it seems that this is a separate volume control than the one if you hit start and go to sound settings right here. That is a separate, you can change your volume here as well. Now, um, what does it have? 21 Arcade Classics, 83 Atari Lynx, 313 Game Gear, 680 Game Boy games. I mean, that's what this is made for, is Game Boy. All right, we're launching Tetris. Got a little launch screen there. This is nice to have this volume control here, though, because you can't change the volume in Emulation Station until you exit the game. So it gives you volume controls while in the game. Let's try the... Okay, yeah, so the contrast is even more apparent, you know, with mobile games. This could have been a Tetris, but it wasn't. Okay, start select lets you leave the game. Something I might also do is if you go back and you hit start, you might want to turn off, go to um, UI settings, quick system, quick system selection, turn that off. In the system, I can't go left to right and skip around to other systems. Just because this D-pad is so small, I have big fingers. If you have small fingers, I'm sure it's not an issue, but um, I was kind of going in between. Now you can definitely tell the lag on this thing, but it's a Raspberry Pi Zero, so you gotta, you know, it's like expecting somebody 100 pounds to lift 80 pounds, or you know, 120 pounds. Game Boy Color 605, hey, we are in color here, people. And then uh, Sega Master System, let's go ahead and, you know, everyone likes Mario, we'll go over to M. You got Mario Golf, Mario Tennis. I think it's under S though for Super Mario. Did I really, okay, I thought I missed it. Oh. Oh, both buttons are jump. I guess I want to hold it down Y and jump. Looking good, right? Okay, let's start select out. Let's try arcade game. Let's say Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Let's insert some tokens, select. All right, so this is working really good. Look at this. Totally playable. This is actually playing really good. This is awesome. This is really awesome. Okay. So I do want to play a game that requires some bumpers. Now obviously PlayStation would do this as well. Um, Super Nintendo, the back buttons on F-Zero are the ones that um, do your um, 
they're drifted. So now I haven't used the back buttons much. Now this is where my skinny hands might have some issues. Oh yeah, so there's the back button. Do you see me kind of dipping? You probably hear me clicking them too. Those are something to be desired. <laughs> For sure, especially like honestly, my fingers are kind of cramping right now. I think I gotta find like a better way to hold this. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would I rather have not have them? No, I definitely want these on there. And uh, I feel like you could just improve on them just a little bit though. So, anyways. All right, this is really hard to do with the camera right here, just so you know. I'm gonna char, you can hear. Oh. Oh well. Sorry, I got a little rough there. Runs good though, look at that. All right, so concluding remarks. This thing is cool. I took the dust cover off, the micro SD got volume. You got the little fake cartridge where the Raspberry Pi Zero resides. You got batteries. You can use rechargeable batteries if you want. You have power to run it off power to save some batteries. You have the contrast button, look at that. Contrast down, contrast up. Lots of options there. Don't forget, these are buttons right here. You got a left trigger and a right trigger. I'm sorry, this would have been the right trigger, right? The right side trigger. Right trigger, left trigger contrast power you have the safe shutdown script you can install so you could turn I could turn this off right now I'll do that in a second talking about controls you get your start select this is not a speaker you do have to have headphones d-pad a little small for my taste but it's to the original Game Boy I just have big hands and then you do get the B A X and Y buttons on this thing and then you got your headphone out you can hook this up to a speaker Bluetooth speaker or speaker um, as long, well, not a Bluetooth speaker, but as long as it's an auxiliary, you should be able to do it just fine. All right, so I'm out of the game. Power on. We'll just go ahead and flick that off. It runs the script, and we're off. Most of them come with this little satchel. This comes pretty stock with the box. Mine came with this extra case, so you're going to see in a second. The satchel's nice because it's kind of a suede material, and you can use it as like a microfiber cloth on the screen to remove all those fingerprints. So here's the carrying case that came with my kit. My kit came with like the extra heat sink and it was still around the right same price, but look at that, you have two little straps to hold it in there nice and tight and then you can zip this up and it even has little Game Boy cartridges and, and extra accessory slots for it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if there should be other images to check out on this thing and we'll catch you on the next one.